But now we are on to a wordsmith. An amazing, phenomenal wordsmith. And by the power of her, of her words, and by the rhythm of her soul, her words will captivate you. Her words will switch on your thoughts. Her words will force you to think. A spoken word artist per excellence. Yes. An amazing, amazing maestro of words. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands together as we welcome Atilola! When you declared publicly that you are now pristine, you assume the trajectory of a life with the smooth sailing. The X axis will reflect the unity of your spiritual prowess, while the Y will indicate the rate of God's goodness. And as long as these two factors are steadily on the rise, the differentiation of your life will be a positive linear graph when plotted on the map of blessings. You will reach an agreement with evil forces, not to decode the wise of their wicked ways, and as long as they keep the X distance per time, you continue to soar with high velocity. But you forget that life is not as direct as mathematics. And unlike algebraic equations, this almighty's formula cannot be figured out. It is not quadratic. More like Trinity with a lot more complex binomials that cannot be captured with your bi-normal eyes. But since you were yet to figure this out, you assume to be rich, healthy, and married speedily. Your offspring will arrive quickly. There will be no miscarriages. Your children never. They will be unruly. They will be these cute, not abiding American citizens. BBC will make you cry because they will be drug addicts. Your milky white career will rise to the peak. Your perfume cross sections with horrible bosses. Your marriage will be perfect. Your spouse will have eyes for you only. And any external party that wants to pat you asunder, we only have your hands under the occipital region of your head when they see how strong your marital bond is. You won't bury anyone in your family. And if anyone dies, it will be after they are 90. And that's after they have gotten permission from you to leave. And on and on, you wrote the story of your perfect world with all the plots scenes and character bios in place till you got your very first punch and then you realize you had just been knocked out in the first round of the game of life you didn't even know you had been playing and all the unaware play actors you thought to be toy soldiers were actually rowing lions and then it hits you life is not a gentleman the fact that you are good does not mean it will reciprocate the goodwill. That you are godly doesn't mean you won't face problems because we could stand here and determine that good actions will lead to a beautiful life while bad actions will lead to a horrible life. Then it will mean that all godly people won't face problems like every other person would have stumbled and struggled through the rubble of existence. And sins would have cracked the code of life and consequence. We will need no higher power for ourselves. Thus define the reason why we need God for ourselves. No. Life not a gentleman. It does not come with smiles and outstretched arms ready to shake your hands in a million dollar tuxedo. It is an amorphous animal with arms ready to wrestle and take you down. It is itching for a fight and unless you are willing to fight back it will eat you raw whether you are ready for it or not. It will call on you to prove the identity you brandish. It will test you and ask you are you worthy of the badge you wear? Be ready because you will fall and be asked to rise. And if you refuse to rise, you'll be kicked further in your falling state. You get angry enough to rise even when no one offers you yeasts. You will need to find the beasts within yourself. Forget bruised, become the hawk, let you get further bruised. No, life is not a gentleman. It's asking you right now as you look into my eyes, have you ever seen a well-sculpted body that wasn't worked out? Of what use is life without trials? You can never rise if you don't fall. And as distasteful as this may sound, you actually need the ground. Because how can you say you're rising when there's no dust you're rising from? The only reason you are called and overcome is because you fought the battle and won the war. And if you didn't face any trials, what exactly did you overcome? No. Life is not a gentleman. It is telling you. You boasted of being one of the conqueror and the territorial commander. Prove it to me. Show me your territory. Let's battle there. And the only way you can win this is, no matter how dark life gets, don't turn it off. Switch it on. As long as you have a whiff of breath within your nostrils, switch it on. It doesn't matter if they ganged up against you, switch it on. You had your 11th miscarriage last month, switch it on. Your spouse used you, abused you, said you amount to nothing without him after he bruised you, switch it on. You keep falling into sins and spiritual strongholds, switch it on. They overlooked you for the promotion yet once again. Switch it on.
Wow! Please, one more round of applause for Atilola. And together, let's say, switch it on. Together, let's say that again. Switch it on. Amazing, amazing. There is more to come.